something a little different. We're gonna show viewers photos and of their palms and tropical gardens. And uh, we've had a few people submit uh, their photos and uh, we're gonna take a look at those today and uh, give a little information about what I see. And uh, this channel has been all about trying to uh, show everybody how to grow uh, some cold hardy palms and tropical plants in colder areas in zones five through eight so here we go we're gonna take a look and before we do that i'm gonna uh, give everybody a reminder to subscribe and like these videos and uh, that way we can keep on making more so let's get into it okay we're gonna start off our photo tour here today and uh, we've got our first viewer who I'm gonna look at here and uh, uh, we'll see. And the first one we're gonna look at is Richard and he's in Huntington on Long Island, New York, which I've seen a few people in New York and uh, 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 there's quite a few palms there. I know there's a place that sells and uh, delivers palms and rents them there. Uh, and this is zone 7A, zone 7B, and it says that he started his palm garden about a year and a half ago when he graduated high school. And it said he's always gardened, but he took his love for tropicals to a new level when he purchased a windmill palm and a waggy. And uh, he planted these trees with the help of some friends and his dad, and he's maintained them completely himself from then on. And it says this last year um, they went through this uh, two degrees Fahrenheit, which we had this very cold weather. And looks like all his palms did well through that. It looks like he protected at least the the windmill palms, the trachycarpus. Uh, he's also got yuccas and uh, cacti, succulents, some sable miner needle palms. Uh, he thinks he's got a Trachycarpus winson, uh, trunking yuccas, a fig, hardy hibiscus, uh, bismarckia, and he's doing a greenhouse. And so uh, uh, he's really got a lot of stuff here. And we'll take a look at these photos. Here in this first photo here, you can see he's got a great pool area and looks like he's got a couple of. Uh, uh, windmill palms going there, trachycarpus, and you see what he's really done really well. This one on the, the bottom right, he's got a, a lot of ground cover around it, and uh, that makes a really good looking tropical area. And he's got uh, a little path and everything going to the, uh, the area out there. And uh, he's got a good mix of uh, tropicals and some of the uh, local uh, 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 evergreen trees and that sort of thing and so that's that's pretty cool so let's look at the second photo here looks like uh, look at a little side bed here with some different things uh, I can't tell a couple of these I'm not that familiar with all the succulents and that sort of thing but there's some of these down at the bottom middle and looks like he has, looks like his potted Bismarckia maybe in the middle. And he's got one of the windmill palms, a trachycarpus there toward close to the house. And uh, that may be one he thinks is, I can't tell if that's the waggy or what, it's a little far away. But that's, uh, you know, he's got a good mix of stuff there. Let's look at the next photo. Looks like here in the far middle, he's got his needle palm. And looks like the one to the right is the uh, Sable Miner. Next photo here, looks like he's got some elephant ear. And he's got some of his cacti down there and some of the things uh, I'm not that familiar with, but in the middle there. Here looks like he's got his sable miner. Uh, this, some people do it like this, or some of the growers, looks like he has two or three close together, which will make a really thick looking uh, plant. Yeah, there's nothing really wrong with doing it that way. Uh, 
uh, uh, they'll do fine that way in the long term. And it, it should be a good uh, palm for him there in uh, 7A, 7B. Next photo here looks like he's got the sunlight coming through and he's got some uh, elephant ears there. Next photo, it looks like we have a, a top view of one of his palms. This is a Trachycarpus palm. Uh, looks like it's good and healthy. And that about does it for Richard there. Uh, and it uh, looks like he's got a really good area. Uh, his palms there are looking in great shape. And uh, uh, looks like he's off to a really good start. Hey, we got the next one here. We're gonna take a look at uh, this is Preston He's in McKinney, Texas. He says it's north of the Dallas Fort Worth area so uh, he says uh, uh, This is the start of his tropical backyard garden uh, He went and got three large Florida sable palms from North Texas palms at the end of May and um, they've established pretty well and he's also getting started with some windmill palms and uh, he's got to add more tropical miners uh, sorry more sable miners and tropical stuff in between the palm trees here pretty soon so let's take a look at his pictures and see what we got so here it looks like his uh, uh, sable palms that he put in this is a very good choice uh, to put in in zone eight but when you transplant these palms uh, from Florida, you gotta be really careful. They take uh, two or three years to get established. You see, it looks like they're still trying to fill out the crown on these. They're gonna look really good by the pool. Just gotta get them through a, uh, another winter and get their roots established real well. And uh, once they fill out a little bit more, they're gonna look really good by the pool. And uh, it's a really good choice if you're in, uh, uh, especially a zone uh, eight or nine, uh, uh, if you're not quite in that uh, really warmer zone. Sable palms are really tough. Uh, so there's the first photo there. Let's go on and see what he's got next. Taking a second on my hand to come up. Uh, I've got a picture of one of the, looks like another one of his sable palms he's got. He's got some, looks like some canna at the bottom of it there. And uh, need to keep these good and watered this year. And uh, they should do good. Third photo here, it looks like he's got some bananas that are getting going. Now those, once they, if you water them well, are going to make a big, uh, tall clump uh, in there. I'm not sure what bananas those are. But um, if you're looking for a really cold hardy banana, you can go with a uh, Musa Baju, which we always talk about on our channel. And, uh, but if you're in a warmer zone, there's quite a few other uh, bananas that you can do. And looks like in the middle there, he's got a uh, windmill palms getting started. And uh, you know, once you put some more plants in there, that's gonna fill out that pool area and that'll look really good. Let's see, third photo here. Or fourth photo is, and it looks like one of his other windmill palms. And, and uh, you know, that's a good choice for that area. Texas is a little hot and dry in some areas, so you gotta be careful. And sometimes you might have to put these in the shade, but uh, 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 windmill palms are pretty tough. Uh, they, if it's really hot, they like to have some afternoon shade and you really need to keep it watered, mulch that area around the bottom good, and keep it good and wet. And that's what the windmill palms like, sable palms do. So let's go on and we'll look at the next one and see what it looks like. Okay, our next viewer that we have is PD Palms is the name he's wanting. And he's located in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And so there's a lot of palms going there. I know we always see a lot. It's, it looks like he says it's zone 8B. So he's he's in the warmer end of the palms that we cover on our channel. And uh, he has um, uh, a queen palm that he planted in April of 22. 
and it survived 18 degrees Fahrenheit, protected with a frost cloth, and he put a heat lamp on it, and uh, just got a little burnt, he said, and uh, of course, this last year was really rough. So they treated it with some f copper fungicide, and it's thriving in green, and so take a look at the, the picture here. It's a uh, it's going on pretty good. You know, you can always, these palms are sold at almost every Lowe's and Home Depot and some of the nurseries each year. So uh, they're very popular and uh, uh, they take down to like the mid 20s, low 20s generally. If you get below that, they're going to take some damage. So uh, they're not super cold hardy, but, uh, but they're, for a feather palm that's really available to a lot of people, it's uh, it's something a lot of people try, and uh, it's a good looking palm if you can get it going. It's just you got to really watch the temperature. Those little fragile fronds on it are really easy to get cold damage, so uh, uh, you just really have to watch that. So we'll look at the second picture of it here. It looks like it's got a picture of the uh, crown of it a little bit, and uh, you know these palms grow fast if you take care of them and. Uh, uh, like I said, quite a few people have them. So that's all the photos from that one, and we'll go on to the last one here. Okay, the next one we have here is all the way from Milstadt, Austria. So this one, um, they have its zone 7B or the equivalent, and this is uh, Haynes from Austria. And this is at his uncle's hotel. And looks like they have Trachycarpus fortuna. It's been there for 10 to 15 years. And they've been protected some years of fleece, uh, uh, coconut mats, heating cables, and pine mulch. And the last few years have been unprotected. And um, they have oleander, a large magnolia, and an olive tree. And uh, uh, looks like uh, we'll take a look here. This is uh, some very good looking uh, palms. Uh, here you see the first picture is a large uh, Trachy Fortunae. And this is the way you really want to see them looking with the fronds all up and down them. They're the prettiest like that. And so it's really, really hard to beat that. And we'll look at the next photo. Looks like at their house, they've got, uh, looks like one, two, at least three uh, trackies here. Um, and uh, they look like they're all good and healthy. I like it there, looks like. Next photo, we've got a uh, large trackie and some landscaping up, up by the uh, side of the, I guess it's the hotel. And you see here we're saying that, uh, you know, when you plant these uh, tracky close to a building, it gives them the most protection. So here it's by a large uh, building pretty close to it. And so it's uh, getting some good protection. It looks like it's doing pretty good there. It's really, really good and healthy. It has multiple rows of fronds. Next photo. I think they said this was some of the largest uh, tracky, tracky carpus in town. And you can see the people walking by there. These these palms look like they're, I don't know, let's see, 12, 20, 25 feet, something like that. One of them looks like has a little bit of crown damage. The other one's in real good shape. And uh, I'm sure that's a little, uh, interesting for everybody there in uh, Austria and let's see what else he's got here oh, there's some really good landscaping looks like he's got the magnolia growing up in the background uh, some different uh, uh, things there and then he's got of course the tracky right in the middle and really pretty really good job and so let's see Last photo here. It looks like he's got the magnolia going. That's a really huge one. And a lot of nice uh, uh, landscaping around there. Looks like he's got some, 
hibiscus of some sort. I can't really tell in the photo the red flowers there. I'm not sure what those are. No, I don't think it's the bush is big enough to be a hibiscus. I'm not sure what those are. Oh, I just noticed there's a trackie in the back right corner back there. I guess that's the one we saw earlier. But anyway, um, that's the tour of some of our uh, um, people on, on our uh, uh, channel that have submitted uh, some photos, some of our viewers, and we're glad to have everybody uh, sending some uh, photos in and taking a look and uh, might do this again in the future if it's popular. So uh, we'll see everybody later. Everybody have a good day.